No, this can't be right, Matthias. Murder? Impossible. Good thing we helped him escape. Now focus, Sherry. Let's remember how we did it. We snuck in when the archives were empty and found something on the archivist's table. A top secret map of catacombs beneath the prison, allowing us to rescue Matthias. No, no, that's not right. It was something else. Let me focus on it. Ah, of course. It was the shift schedule. We wanted to know which officer was on prison duty that day. Ah, uh, that's not how I remember it. Or maybe... Yes. We went to find the officer's desk. That's where the map was. We waited until no one was around, then searched the desk. You were on lookout, John. Do you recall what we found here? I remember a book with wax stains damaged by humidity. The officer used it to keep him company during long prison shifts. A half-eaten tuna sandwich, it was carefully wrapped in a hand-stitched kerchief. You almost took a bite, John. There was a chain of keys. We found something here, John, and something else. It was a police billy club, new, but already stained with blood. What's important is that we found keys. By my memory, we crept to the prison cells immediately. Let's go. Oh, what a long day. Guards were lazy. Knowing their shift schedule, it was easy to sneak past them and find the right cell. Yes, and with the keys and map in hand, we busted out Matthias and escaped through the catacombs. John, no, that's not what happened. Let me remember. It was dark. His cell smelt of decay and excrement. I remember calling for him, but Matthias did not answer, so I walked inside. saw a shape. It was moving just barely. I remember seeing his familiar yellow jacket now torn and covered in strange brown splotches. I saw his legs twisted at an impossible angle. Then someone called to me from the door. It was an officer. He didn't yell when he saw me, understood it at a glance. He took me outside, told me to forget what I saw. In a way, I did. Sherry, I... Come outside. We should take a photo of the cell. I know you want to remember the truth. Rest easy, Matthias. John... I must find that loathsome mutton shunter Mitchell. I will find him. That's... it's not fair. He deserved worse. And Matthias deserved better. 
There is a lot of injustice in the world, Sherry. Your skills could make a difference for others like him. Mr. Holmes, I have something for you. Mr. Holmes, I see what you're up to. Mysterious stranger pursues betrothed woman. But please, let us keep things professional. I have in my possession an envelope containing details of a special assignment for you. Tell me, are you interested? Miss Sirtle, I am not pursuing you, and I am not pursuing further work at the minute. Well, it shall wait for you here. Do come back. It's quite something. Mr. Holmes, that envelope awaits. Surely you want the task? I'll admit, you piqued my interest. Glorious. Now, let me set the scene. A gang of smugglers, the eels, have Cordona in their clammy grip. The British Empire can abide it no longer. Mycroft insists they be disbanded. But this organization only falls with the capture of their odious leader, Friedrich Panzer. And note well, I did say capture, not kill. Inside your envelope is a map marked with the eels' warehouses. But alas, we do not know in which Friedrich Panzer resides. Hmm. So even Mycroft has his limits. Indeed. You must be sure to identify the correct warehouse before entering. Because once one is compromised, the other's occupants will scatter. Here are all the files, and feel free to use the archive too. Again, do not enter the wrong location, nor see any harm done to Friedrich Panzer. Miss Sirtle, if you're quite done with the redundant instructions, I shall get to work. Well, that's perfect. Tortured hero lashes out after rejected romance. Tomorrow's edition will be a sensation. The editor here is a quack, putting my gripping corruption investigation on the fourth page. We can't tolerate such disrespect, right, Sherlock? Mm, yes, yes, John. You know, I'm starting to remember. We wrote it somewhere in this building. Let's find where. It was a military parade that day. Everyone was there, so we had the office at our disposal for a while. Still, it's a miracle we weren't caught. An underappreciated masterpiece was born here. You recall anything else? Working on this machine felt right. We almost ran out of ink ribbon, but somehow, somehow, we knew it wouldn't inconvenience anyone. I found a folder with approved stories. John, it wasn't the editor, it was us. We swapped the article on the fourth page with ours. 
curious. We had a suitcase. It was soggy and filled with notes and clippings. I remember it was important somehow. Is that all, my friend? John, no, wait. I'm missing something crucial. The suitcase, where did we get it from? Okay, Sherlock, focus on it. What can you remember about it? I can recall the smell of... of fish. It was so strong I could taste it. Ah, I think we were near one of those fish warehouses. Big ones. It felt wet and slimy, as if it had lain in the water for some time. Yet the insides were surprisingly intact. Yes, right. And I remember the sound of horns like they use at the industrial sites. It must be somewhere on the Silverton coast. Oh, that comprises the entirety of my memories on the subject. So, we are looking for a fish warehouse on the coast of Silverton that stands right on the water's edge. It seems so, my friend. I am sure I will remember the place when I see it. Let's go. I'll be right here. May I ask you something? I'd tell you if I knew, but unfortunately, I don't. Have you found anything helpful? John, this is the spot. Let's see what we can record. We found a rope tied to one of the books. We pulled and a suitcase emerged. How did we know where to look? What am I missing? Brown algae. We were specifically looking for it. I think we saw it on someone, someone nearby. I I think I can remember where. All right, lead the way.
It was night. We saw a man with ink-stained fingers and a notebook. A journalist. His scared look and hasty steps smelled of adventure. We followed. Another man appeared, he was casually dressed, but his haircut and posture revealed him to be a soldier. The journalist quickly changed direction. Another disguised soldier cut the journalist off. He was cornered. We hid behind the barrels and watched. The three men argued. The soldiers demanded something from the journalist, but he refused. Their words grew louder and someone pushed the reporter. He stumbled and fell over the edge. After one horrible yell, he hit the ground. The soldiers vanished. We waited to be safe, then went to him. Focus, my friend. I know you'll remember everything. Blood was everywhere. I was in shock, but you kept your cool. You noticed that his shoes had a layer of salt and brown algae stuck to his leg. Those men demanded something from him. I wanted to find out what was so valuable as to kill for. And so we did. Made it public. The journalist Hector Jacobson. People built a memorial after his death. That might be a good backdrop for our picture. Let's find it. May I ask for your assistance? So, you think if you have money we should bow to your whims? No, sir. Could you help me? What a coincidence. I only learned of this recently myself.
Hector Jacobson was killed for his story, yet it still came to light. A lesson for those less noble. You cannot bury the truth. I think here is a good place for a picture, Sherry. It was an early morning. For some reason, we snuck out of the house and crossed the bridge into Miner's End. Hmm. We were always adventuring, Sherry. Focus on the bone. That's what's important here. Yes, I remember. It was huge, but wait. How did we find it? I think there was someone else. Of course, Toby, our furry partner in crime, John. How could I have forgotten? Whoa, it was quite a while ago. Hey, do you remember how we met him? I remember bell sounds and sweat and the smell of incense. I think it was at the church in Western Miner's End. Let's find the place. May I ask for your assistance? Go back to work. I'm not answering your questions. Can I ask you a question? Yes, mister. I know this. Can't wait to recall how we first met Toby. The morning sun was shining and church bells called the town to mass, but we weren't here for a ceremony. We were running. From what? Of course. The dreaded Dudley. He was still incensed after the stolen clothes incident and wanted to teach us a lesson. I can almost see where we ran. We lost him for a moment and tried to hide. You pointed to the small courtyard and we ran in.
We hid behind crates full of fish. They were stamped as fresh, but I remember my stomach did not agree with that statement. Oh, no, that smell. It almost made me want to face Dudley. But before that happened, there was a noise. The idiot had a brain the size of a peanut, but when it came to finding us across the island, his cunning was almost supernatural. Unlike us, he knew many kids on Cordona, and all were eager to get into his good favours. But this time, he met someone who wasn't scared of him. We heard a low growl first, then a dismissive cry, a loud bark after that, and a terrified scream a moment later. And when we looked up, we saw only a big angry dog with ripped breeches in its jaw. I was scared, but you wanted to get closer, Sherry, remember? He looked hungry, and I had a sandwich from home. He sniffed it cautiously and then accepted it and let me pet him. It was the first of many snacks. Ugh, oh, those dreaded ham and pickle sandwiches. Lucky for Toby, I'm more of a tuna guy. John, I am starting to recall something else. Close nearby, under the building with a huge water tower on top, we saw it from the church. Hey, Fahad. I am a little hungry. We heard rumours that this place was haunted, strange lights in the night, people disappearing. One night we decided to investigate. Toby was with us, always happy to join on our escapades. He stopped when we neared the building and refused to go further, but we, I, was resolute. It was pitch black, so we had to light the lamp. The smell of oil and burned hair filled the night. Then something moved in the shadows. It was a man. I remember a dirty shirt, horrifying smile, and a pair of manacles in his hand. We turned to run. when we saw that we were cut off. This one had a rope in his hands. My heart sunk. Then I heard a growl. Toby jumped the slavers with all the fury his size contained. We got the hint and ran like the clappers. And I never saw our Toby again. We departed Cordona soon after that night, Sherry. Perhaps he was hiding or wandering. It was not unlike him to disappear for weeks on end. Yes, you may be right. I simply... I regret going to that place. I should have listened to Toby's warnings. And leave a haunted building unexplored? You know very well that is a mystery that would have nagged us forever. I know, and yet... No sense dwelling on ifs and maybes. We can choose to remember those times how we want. I'll draw a picture. You just pick the scene. The moment when we found the bone, I want us to remember playing together. Good choice. I would have picked the same. Always loved dinosaurs. I will make a drawing.
We found this old shipwreck soon after we arrived on Cordona. It quickly became our favorite place. I remember feeling safe. Ahoy, our mighty frigate! All hands, ahoy! Show me you haven't become no lily-livered landlubber. We needed a good sail, so obviously we went and stole some sheets from Mycroft's bed. He was furious. I'm sure he still holds the grudge. Twas a good rig we ran on him. Oi! We wanted to name our ship. We took some planks and a bucket of paint from workers at the nearby construction site. Arabella, we called her. A real woman of war, she was. This helm was borrowed from father's collection. He enlisted the police to try and find it, but all the while it was here helping us steer our ship. Oi, Sherry, and ye were the best coxswain on the briny deep. I'm starting to remember, John. We didn't stay here for long. Someone... someone else came. Shiver me timbers, those were the king's men. They came for our booty and to make us dance the heppum jig. No, no, John, that's not right. It, it was someone else. Let me focus. Of course. Dudley and his henchmen, they couldn't stand some rich kids playing on their territory. And their territory was wherever they saw us. Those sons of biscuit eaters stood no chance against real swashbucklers. Sure, but we ran, didn't we? Uh, well, yes, but only to get our weapon. Savvy! Head up that bridge, buccaneer, to the cannon. Up that bridge, to the cannon. We wanted to teach them a lesson. Mycroft once said that this cannon was still operational. Obviously, we tried to fire it. Aye, if we couldn't sail our Arabella, no one would. With one good shot broadside, we sent those freebooters to the Davy Jones. John, this is getting ridiculous. We didn't fire the cannon. We couldn't fight those boys. We just ran. It was over. Just let it go. No, stop your whining, you lubber. It's... John, please stop. I said it's over. No, wait, Sherry. There is one more thing you need to see. Oh, what's the point? To see another place we were chased away from? No, no, this will be different. Trust me. All right, John. One last place. Avast ye! It's this side of the bridge. A small cave on the beach. We left a sign on its wall. It might still be there.
think... I think I remember this place. Let me see what we can find. This cave is my favourite place on Cordona. My favourite place in all the world. This was my father's helm, so we had to steal it back from Dudley. It was high tide and I caught a chill. Spent the next week in bed with a fever. You can't put an old name on a new ship. That's why we called her Themis. If you're a bully, it's a bad idea to leave clothes unattended while swimming. Someone may repurpose your trousers into a surprisingly good sail. Oi, matey, let's get our ship shape once more. This cave is my favourite place on Cordona. My favourite place in all the world. I must admit, John, it was good to remember. Let's take a photograph. Oh, Sherry, come on. I know you want to do it. All hands ahoy! Weigh anchor and hoist the mizzen! Heave ho, first mate John! We have a Spanish galleon to plunder! John, that's it. We've revisited all the places I wanted from my diary. Even without the rose-tinted glasses, it was good to remember, my friend. <laughs>